Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us for today's US Laborious Client Webinar, Coronavirus Getting Back to Work. My name is Annie, and I'm the Business Development Coordinator at US Laborious, and I will be facilitating this session for you. Our presenters today are all uh, lawyers from the US Laborious firms in Israel, Greece, Cyprus, and Turkey. And I'm now then handing over to our first speaker uh, from Israel, Orly Jerby. Uh, go ahead, Orly, you are welcome to start. Thank you very much, Annie. Welcome to our US Laboris webinar and thank you all for joining, joining us. Over the last three months, the world has experienced a mega shockwave due to this unexpected COVID-19 situation. The effect is all over our lives and obviously the workplace. I wonder how many of you are working from home or from the office, how many of you are wearing their business suits or wearing their pyjama. Um, so, you know, it's the new world that we, we are now facing and of course we will deal with this topic, but we would like to try and focus it from the optimistic angle and discuss the return to work. Um, you know, there are optimistic uh, angles of this situation. And to that end, I would like to introduce uh, my colleagues, friends, uh, panel participants here. So we have here from Turkey, Batuan Shan Shanmai. We have Dimitris uh, Kremlis from Greece. We have Nikos Payanotos from Cyprus and me, Orly Jerby uh, from Israel. The, the webinar, the structure is we will have three rounds um, during which we will discuss several topics from different uh, angles. We will start with the post lockdown issue, issues then walk through short term challenges that we have, that we all have, and then move on to long-term uh, aspects. Uh, as Annie said, you are all welcome to make comments, questions, uh, any ideas we will, will be welcome here. And without further ado, uh, let us begin with our, uh, our jurisdiction, my jurisdiction, uh, Israel. So what's going on in Israel? Frankly, when Annie approached me, the situation was much better. We were under the impression that the coronavirus is behind us. Unfortunately, it was too early to celebrate and we're still facing uh, some increase uh, and maybe, maybe a second wave, but the exit strategy is very dominant here. I mean, as you see, as you can see, I'm in my uh, office um, and most of the workplaces uh, are working and the situation in terms of regulations is as follows. There is a set of emergency regulations. I will divide it into three and the idea is to follow the exact instructions here and most of the industries can work in full assuming that they can uh, that they can keep all the strict uh, uh, regulations uh, at place. So the first thing is how many employees can come to work we are dividing it into two uh, different types of industries, the exempted and the non-exempted, the regular ones like lawyers, for example, the rule is up to 30% of the workforce can stay simultaneously at the same time in the workplace. But if you would like to increase up to 100, you have to follow a, what we call a purple seal certificates. It's a self-regulation, you, you, you don't need to approach any authority, you just have to follow certain rule, start sign an affidavit, and make sure that everything is at place. The exempted industries are belonging to the energy sector, water, food, uh, places who, who are great uh, with significant export activities. So it's not only for you know the, the straightforward thing, but also uh, industries that are very important to the economy. They were never subject to the 30% rules and could continue uh, to work as usual. So basically you can imagine that uh, we are really flexible in this regard, assuming that we are following the rules. There are two other sets of rules. Um, we have to check the temperature in the beginning of every day of every employee. We have to ask three questions regarding the health. We have to keep social distancing of two meters, keep uh, equipment in a personal way or or uh, clean it very carefully afterwards. Uh, we have to wear the masks, okay? The face masks uh, everywhere uh, in, the, uh, in the public arena. 
there are very narrow exemptions if I am alone in my room or two permanent uh, people in the same room, or if you are putting some kind of a partition uh, between people, this is uh, very strict and mandatory, but again, it, it made things happen. It made the economy um, moving on more and more uh, back to normal. So there are a lot of considerations here and whether or not employers can keep all these rules, but if they can do it, then it's fine and move on and open it. We see the restaurants now that are open, schools, etc. So some kind of normality is already here. Um, I would like now to move on to my uh, colleague uh, to discuss the how are things how are things now in uh, in uh, Greece. So go ahead, please. Thank you very much, Orly. Uh, the situation in Greece is uh, pretty much uh, the same. Uh, namely, uh, we have been uh, faced with this uh, unprecedented uh, uh, kind of um, uh, invisible uh, enemy, as our Prime Minister called it, and uh, there was a rush uh, by the uh, legislator to try within a very uh, short uh, time period uh, and um, uh, regulate uh, this, uh, this kind of uh, exceptional conditions. And, and these regulations uh, were with uh, regards to uh, the taxation measures, uh, the social security contributions, uh, but um, uh, um, most uh, uh, mainly also the, the employment uh, conditions. Um, and there was in fact uh, uh, several concerns about uh, the clarity of these uh, uh, pieces of uh, uh, legislative um, acts that needed to be uh, clarified and then again clarified until um, uh, the market uh, resolved the issues raised. So uh, the, the, the main issue that we faced was the gradual um, uh, operations uh, and opening uh, of, uh, uh, of, of businesses and the maintenance uh, of uh, employment uh, uh, positions uh, and not uh, uh, deterioration of uh, employment uh, terms. So the government mainly aimed at um, and doing these uh, uh, subsidies programs uh, for uh, businesses uh, that were classified as uh, suffering the implications of COVID and these were businesses falling into a specific set of activity codes and these activity codes were being enhanced uh, on the term of uh, uh, the, the spread of the virus. These, these businesses benefited from uh, uh, certain um, uh, payment um, uh, delays, uh, extension of deadlines, uh, deductions of tax payments like 25% deduction if uh, promptly paid, and eligibility to participate in uh, state aid subsidy programs upon certain criteria. For employment, there was um, uh, a new uh, notion of, of suspension of employment contract, uh, where during the suspension period, there was a prohibition of terminations. And uh, recently, uh, there was another uh, program called Synergasia in Greek, uh, meaning cooperation in English, which was an effort of the Greek government to uh, try and uh, maintain uh, uh, the uh, job positions um, uh, after the uh, lockdown period by uh, enabling the companies to reduce by 50% uh, the, their uh, personnel uh, time, whereas on the same time subsidizing the 60% of uh, the wages uh, lost. Of course, within this framework, there were also uh, severe sanctions in case of, of breach of uh, uh, the relevant COVID-19 provisions. And recently, these, uh, these sanctions uh, raised from administrative penalties from 1,000 to 50K and uh, suspension of uh, operations. So it remains to be seen um, uh, what will happen after this interim period uh, of uh, the applicability of this uh, Synergasia program and uh, how we can uh, tackle the, a possible second wave that according to experts uh, is, is being expected within September or October. 
Uh, I'm sure that uh, uh, the rest of uh, the, the participants will have uh, also some very interesting uh, thoughts about that. Nikos, you are on mute. Thank you, Dimitris. Uh, my name is Nikos Panayotou and I will present today's Cyprus uh, perspective on today's topics. As some of you may already know, Cyprus had fairly good results so far from a public health perspective in facing the COVID-19 pandemic, counting only about 1,000 people infected by the virus and then 19 COVID-related deaths. However, the strict measures adopted by the Cypriot government to prevent the spread of the virus, and especially the closing down of schools and airports, have definitely raised serious issues for employers all over the island. These good results, however, gave the opportunity to the Cypriot government to proceed with a gradual lift of the restrictions, with the aim, of course, to return Cyprus back to normality as soon as possible. Currently, Cyprus is going through the third phase of the restriction lifting, which started June 9, 2020, a phase that one could say is the most crucial phase of restriction lifting so far. And during this phase, Cyprus saw the opening of schools and airports, and basically the most of the island's businesses, including big business centers and shopping malls. Also during this phase, the special leave scheme issued by the government, paying out special leave benefit to employees of work for childcare needs have come to an end, causing a mass return on employees back to their workplaces. Having the above in mind, it is fairly obvious that this period poses various short-term, both long-term issues and challenges for employers who are called upon to make serious decisions, important decisions that regard both the health and safety of their employees and also their future of their businesses. Some of these issues, of course, we'll go and discuss later on on this webinar, but before doing that, let's discuss some legal issues that characterize today's period we are going through. Feature number one we would like to discuss is the governmental business support schemes that are in action. Currently, numbers, scheme number four is in action, in which will remain active up to the 12th of October 2020. This scheme, unlike other schemes that cover most of the business of, in Cyprus, cover only businesses under a mandatory suspension of business and business within the tourist section. Uh, feature number two is the prohibition of dismissals and redundancies now active in Cyprus. Uh, for schemes number one and three, the prohibition covers the period of participation in the scheme plus an additional period equal to the, uh, the participation period plus one month. Uh, for scheme number four, the prohibition will end on October 31st, 2020. The last uh, feature we would like to discuss is the recent legislation is issued by the Cypriot government under which uh, stricter and higher penalties are imposed to employers and businesses that violate the COVID-19 regulations. This is said to be a strict but fair uh, legislation since it provides higher penalties for larger businesses. Also, it provides that fines doubles for more than one offense, and the maximum penalty is 8,000 euros for first offense and 60,000 euros for a second offense. So this has concluded this first part of my presentation. Let's go now to my colleague, Batuhan Sakmai from Turkey for his view on these issues. Hi, Nikos. Thank you. This is Batuhan. Um, well, our government has enacted lots of changes, lots of measures to combat COVID-19 or to minimize its effects on uh, Turkish citizens, employees and employers. And in this slide, I am going to talk about the, the three most important uh, amendments that the Turkish government has made regarding COVID-19. The first one is temporary termination ban. Uh, in accordance with this change, in order to preserve the employment, a uh, government has prohibited employers from terminating employees until 17 July 2020. However, of course, there are some exemptions. For example, if there is a termination with cause, then you can terminate them. Uh, for example, release of confidential information, harassment, etc. cetera. Um, and also this ban can be extended for another three months. So it can be extended until 17th of October, 2020 by the government. Uh, currently there is no official information, but the unofficial info that we got is it will be extended 
and uh, if the companies breach this prohibition, then there could be two sanctions. The first one is uh, there could be a fine in the uh, amount of one month's national minimum wage. And the second one is the termination can be most likely deemed invalid in case of a dispute. Uh, the second most important amendment the government has made regarding employment is now the employers can put employees on unpaid leave and they will not require employees consent. So this means that a company can unilaterally send an employee on unpaid leave, uh, but this can only be applicable during the termination ban. So after the termination ban, in order to send them on unpaid leave, we will still need employees consent. Um, and the last uh, important amendment is the government has enacted several assistances uh, with regards to employees and employers. And most, uh, the most important one is government, I mean Social Security and Turkish Employment Agency is uh, paying some kind of assistance to the employees who have been terminated or who have been put on lay, uh, leave or whose work hours are reduced uh, so that they can survive during this COVID-19. And this is the, as I mentioned, the most three important amendments under Turkish employment. And now, uh, Orly, you can talk about the next topic. Thank you very much, Bautan. Uh, so uh, we are now going to focus on the short-term issues. I mean, there are plenty of new challenges that we are facing due to this uh, uh, COVID-19 situation. Any, can you move on to the next slide, please? Thank you. Um, what I what I chose to to discuss, of course, it's only the tip of the eyes here. Uh, first of all, is some kind of a responsibility us as employers for our employees' health. I think it's it's much a, a health and safety was something that I'm not sure it was in the top of the employers uh, in the in top of the employer things that he need to make sure that happening. And now it became one of the most important things. So first of all, as I said, you know, the challenge is really, and it's not easy to keep everything in place, to keep the rules. People are not doing everything that are being told. And as I see it is one of the most uh, important challenges. But in addition, there are other, let's say soft challenges. For example, um, in Israel, we do not have any prohibition to terminate due to this uh, COVID-19 situation. And, but there are a lot of challenges to employees. The education system was not working. Um, employees in high risk groups uh, couldn't come to work or were concerned of coming to work. Uh, the public transportation was not uh, working in an orderly way. The train just came back you know, to our lives just a few days ago in Israel. So what is, you know, the employers, what does he have to do and what does he need to do and what is the right thing to do? I think this was one of the greatest challenges that we dealt with. From a legal point, a straightforward legal point, there was no limitation of saying to the employee, sorry, the school is not working, you need to come. Um, I don't know, you, are, you have some background uh, disease, it's not my problem. So basically from a legal perspective, straightforward, it was, it, was a, a, it was okay to require the employees to come. However, obviously, we have a general perception of acting in good faith. Of course, we would like to keep our employees happy. Of course, we would like to act in a fair way, to be thoughtful. And of course, it changes from one industry to another, because if you are an industry that, that can a, a, afford that people would continue to work home like lawyers, that's fine. But if you need your employees here to work in the lab or somewhere else, there is no choice. It's not that you are choosing to be a bad employer. It's just something that you need to deal with. So this was a very, very important and challenging discussion involving managerial perspective, HR, and of course, legal. And we assisted our clients, you know, to pick when, uh, when to, uh, uh, when to uh, require people to come, when to uh, find maybe some kind of a balance or alternative or creative solutions, uh, work in the afternoon, come later, uh, in, in, in private transportation and so on. So this is one challenge that I think is now uh, one of the most uh, hot topics here in Israel. The second one, and I'm sure that it is 
common to uh, many jurisdictions is the privacy issues. Uh, the point, the, the balance point as we know it is definitely, uh, has definitely changed. I don't know if to say it dramatically like forever, but at least in the short, in the short term uh, angle. Uh, here, you know, we had judgments of hundreds of pages, whether we can do this or to do that. And you know, all this balance regarding privacy and employment. And suddenly, you know, I'm coming to the office and you know, the first thing I do in a very normal way is to check my temperature, okay? I mean, this is something that six months ago, I would, would couldn't believe that this would be the way. Now, the next steps that we are facing, as much as I see it, as I said, we have some hints for second waves, I hope not, but still, how do you deal with an infected individual in the workplace, whether you can reveal his name or not? There, is, there are certain rules in accordance with our law, and it's very, very gentle balance of how to deal with it, what is the legal perspective here, and even if, if in accordance with the law, I can protect a, a, such a step, still, again, from an HR perspective or, or, a, or other perspectives, I might not do this and do it very carefully with a very organized plan that we are working together, of course, subject to the circumstances. I think the, the last point that I would like to mention, um, it was in my long-term issues, but I moved it into the short-term issues because I think it's all, it will, be, it will be here. Many employers are asking us whether they can make, it, make the employees um, take corona tests and make it conditions uh, to come before coming to work? The answer in accordance with our current law is no, uh, definitely no. But uh, I see that it's a trend. I see discussions in this regard, and I think this is going to be the next challenge or the next topics that we will deal with maybe in the next uh, webinar. So uh, this is the next topic. And the third topic, I will just mention it in it just briefly, I think, now, after a few months that we are under this uh, very uh, unique situation, it's time for a new examination of, of the employment documents. I'm not saying that we have to change everything, but during this couple of months, everyone thought about points that they might need to change in their templates. It can be in the privacy policy, data protection policy, working from home policy, uh, absence policy. So I think it's a good time to say, what, do, what did we learn? what this new situation uh, forced, us to, to, forced us to deal with and whether we can do something about it for hopefully not, but for the next crisis to come. Um, so this is, you know, my, uh, my uh, Israeli angle. Demetrius, you are welcome to share our thoughts in this regard. Thank you very much, Orly. Uh, well, the, the short-term issues that we have faced uh, during the uh, last uh, two months uh, were depending on, um, on the activity of, uh, of, of, of the different companies, uh, namely companies acting in, in the IT sector or in, in telecommunications and generally that were enforcing a certain work from home environment uh, were um, very uh, ready uh, to to adapt to these uh, new circumstances, whereas companies that uh, were in other sectors uh, like uh, uh, the tourism sector, uh, the hospitality sector that were uh, banned uh, by the government and, and were forced to remain closed, uh, as well as companies in the retail sector, in the merchandise sectors, they needed to adapt certain uh, strategies in order to uh, make it a more viable environment for them. So the main dilemma that um, uh, was faced by those companies was how to benefit uh, from uh, these um, uh, state aid programs, uh, namely the suspension of employment uh, agreements, uh, the putting of the personnel up to an amount of 50% uh, uh, into, into hold and, and regulating uh, the working time. Uh, whereas on, on, on the same time, uh, not uh, losing um, uh, much of their scope of their managerial prerogative, because all these um, uh, programs um, had as, a, uh, as, a, as an implication the reduction of the uh, business uh, 
uh, business um, uh, approach uh, as to regulating uh, the uh, terms and conditions of employees uh, and were related with a specific um, uh, protection scheme that lasted uh, between uh, 45 days after uh, the putting on, on suspension uh, to 30 days after the introduction of these programs. So this was and maintains, uh, continues to be an interesting uh, dilemma that many of our clients were asking us, namely, what should I do? Should I uh, put my employees and which part of my employees uh, on uh, suspension? Should I combine suspension with uh, um, uh, the uh, putting on hold? Uh, should I enforce uh, teleworking for uh, employees uh, that are uh, declared as suspended because I need to benefit also from the uh, state aid subsidy but not close our business. Um, these, these were uh, kind of questions that we faced. The sure thing is that uh, employers um, have uh, uh, looked uh, in, in more detail into the uh, framework of the employment relationship and the uh, uh, the ways uh, of um, uh, increasing uh, their flexibility during this time. Uh, teleworking has been uh, one of the main uh, tools uh, used uh, to uh, render uh, work uh, when possible from distance, uh, home from office environments. Everyone has discovered uh, Zoom uh, and Team and all these other functionalities. Uh, shift work, of course, has been uh, uh, combined. And another thing uh, was uh, a certain uh, problematic of justified dismissals for companies that needed to uh, cut the personnel due to restructuring or due to uh, specific um, uh, other personal issues. Uh, several other um, uh, questions that we were dealing with was how to treat employees in special categories like employees that were classified by the National Health Organization as vulnerable groups or uh, employees at high risk. And there have been, of course, several directives by these organizations as to who is eligible to stay at home and who should um, uh, return uh, in, in the office. Uh, it was quite uh, usual for us to uh, receive uh, queries uh, regarding employees that were not uh, into these special categories, but they have provided the company with medical uh, certificates saying, look, my doctor has uh, suggested me to, wo to, to work from home and stay for 10 days here because it's a safer environment or other employees saying, I will not go to office uh, together with my colleagues because I don't know who has uh, returned from uh, uh, travel uh, from Italy, for example, or who has been um, uh, dealing with other high risk cases. And there has been also uh, a problematic of uh, how to, to deal with uh, the occupational health and, and safety standards uh, within the companies, both from these uh, vulnerable groups that may need an additional uh, uh, standard of protection, as well as the, uh, the regular staff. So there are some limitations, like not having the office uh, uh, closer uh, than, than two meters each other, or uh, there have been some other limitations with regards to personal hygiene and um, uh, the uh, avoidance to, to transmit COVID-19. But of course, the, the restructuring and, and, and the investment of um, uh, costs for um, uh, enforcing stricter occupational health and safety standards has been um, uh, questioned and is uh, something that uh, will uh, uh, we need to be evaluated in a, in a more long-term perspective. Uh, I'm sure that Nikos will have some very interesting uh, uh, perspectives to share for, for Cyprus too. Thank you very much, Dimitris. Uh, as I mentioned before, employers in Cyprus face both short-term and long-term challenges during this getting back to work period. One of the most important short-term challenges in, is in our opinion, as my colleagues already mentioned the facilitation of a safe work environment for employees to return to. In Cyprus, employers, of course, have the general responsibility to protect their employees' health and safety and the local health and safety legislation. 
the volume of which has increasingly increased during this crisis. Especially during the third phase of restriction lifts, many new rules dealing employees return back to work have come into force, based on which employers are required to implement health-related protocols and follow specific procedures, including maintaining and frequently reviewing a written risk assessment of the transmission and spread of the virus and apply a health and safety management system at work. Also, they must train their employees and provide them with information and on the procedure followed by the business, but also uh, give them all the information they need uh, about the, 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 their responsibilities under these procedures. A second short-term issue that is very, very and particularly important to discuss is the issue of potential changes in the terms of employment after the employees will return back to work. During this pandemic, many employers observed a change in the needs of their businesses, especially in, related, in relation to employees' uh, working hours and duties and other terms of employment. Also, due, due to the new economic reality of the post-COVID-19 era, many employers are examining deductions in their employees' salaries or in other allowances or other benefits uh, that employees enjoy. Having this in mind, it is crucial to highlight that employers must be very careful when dealing with issues that could send changes in the terms of employment, since a unilateral change in an essential employment term will repudiate the contract of employment and give the employee the right to bring a claim against the business for constructive dismissal or for breach of contract. Also, very important to highlight, a deduction in salary uh, without the employee's consent will violate Cypriot legislation on salary protection under which employers may face a fine up to 15,000 euros or imprisonment up to six months or both penalty. Both, person to all the above, employers should be very careful and always uh, uh, take legal advice prior to any changes that will occur in their business during their crisis. This have concluded my presentation on these short-term issues. Let's go now to my colleague Batuhan for his presentation uh, on these issues as well. Thank you, Nikos. So in Turkey, we foresee like uh, the four main uh, issues that can arise in a short-term uh, manner of time. And uh, let's go over them one by one. The first one is uh, the employees who have been on leave or who have been working remotely they may be hesitant to come to work because they may fear of getting COVID-19 infection. So, uh, but if they refuse to come to work without a just reason, such as a chronic disease um, or some other just cause, then, uh, and if they do not come to work, then we can terminate the employee with, with uh, just cause and it will be an immediate termination. So just keep that in mind. The other issue that can occur is, uh, you know, the COVID-19 will most likely affect the workload and uh, the profits of the companies. So therefore, uh, they might need fewer employees uh, because of the reduced workload. And in that case, this will lead to redundancies, terminations. And um, given now there's a pandemic and there's a termination ban, the terminations will most likely be problematic and it can be, it will be, uh, it can create more conflict than a normal termination. Uh, another short-term issue could be uh, due to the decrease of the profits of the companies. Uh, companies might want to amend the working condition of the employees, such as reducing salary, reducing benefits, or cutting down working hours, etc. But in order to do that, you need the consent of the employees because without consent, we cannot make unfavorable changes to the employees. So uh, I imagine that employees can create issues and they may not give their consent. So this could be a short-term issue as well. And the last one is um, if they suffer COVID, if they get infected with COVID-19, during uh, performing work or at the workplace, this can be considered as a workplace accident and therefore liability of the employer can arise. And in order to reduce or minimize that risk, the company should uh, adopt uh, health and safety measures 
uh, but this will increase the the cost of the companies and this will increase the the liability of the companies with, with regards to COVID-19. So these are the short-term issues for Turkey and now only we can talk about the next subject. Thank you very much. So moving on to the long-term issues, uh, you know, it's very hard sometimes to distinguish what is short-term and what is long-term, but I think, I mean, you know, from, from, from my, uh, my point of view, I think work from home is one of the most important things that are here to stay, uh, maybe for good. I know it's not new thing. I mean, companies allow their employees to work from home, but it was on a very uh, irregular, I mean, you know, once a month or once a week and after an approval and some kind of uh, a lot of terms. And here um, the, we have plenty of companies that declare that they are not going to open because, you know, they, they discovered that the advantages in working uh, from home. So, you know, they said, talk to us uh, uh, and on December 2020 and, and then we'll see all the world of the universities and higher education uh, we are in under discussions with managements there. They are saying the world is not going to be the same again. All the platforms are going to be changed. Again, uh, it's under discussions, but it is something that we definitely see a, a critical, crucial change in our uh, uh, in our uh, labor employment uh, market. And this, of course, forces us to deal with topics that we dealt with in the past, but it was, you know, in a very, very low level because it was not that um, not that frequent. So first of all, you know, um, our advice is, you know, to check uh, in insurance uh, coverage, whether or not, you know, there are many questions, whether or not we are obligated to uh, provide with some kind of an environment. Um, on the other hand, whether we are allowed to require uh, things from the employee, certain hours to be available, um, I'm, I'm, I'm mixing with, the, with another bullet, which I call Zoom meeting tool. Uh, Dimitris, you, 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 you mentioned it, but you know, whether or not we need a separate policy for dealing with the Zoom, whether it's, uh, it's mandatory to open your camera, uh, for example, okay, I'm sure all of you are uh, facing some meetings that everyone are, you know, uh, are on mute and without a camera and God knows what they're doing. Clothing, whether we should set a, a a code of how do you appear to these uh, meetings. Now, of course, we are in a webinar. We all wore, you know, our business uh, clothing, but I'm sure that you faced some meetings that uh, took place maybe, you know, due to the mixture between uh, rest and work. Sometimes you're taking it from the kitchen and sometimes maybe from your uh, bedroom, maybe. Um, so, you know, there are a lot of issues that came and came uh, through this period due to this frequent use, usage of this Zoom meeting tool that it's part of working from home. Uh, of course, other uh, policies like uh, data protection, confidentiality, again, it was there, but now uh, we worked very hard, you know, with the clients to uh, maintain this policy and think of new things in this regard. Um, so I think this is a, a one of the topics that uh, is, uh, is here to stay um, a, in a significant way. We spoke about Corona test and privacy. Now I think, you know, the, there will be issues of the gradually, the, I mean, the fact that we are opening things gradually and hopefully we will be able to fly soon and uh, without a, 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 I mean, a digital requirement. So now many companies are starting to do their planning of who is flying where, what are the work definitions, what is our obligation, whether we can force someone to do stuff, you know, after this shocking situation or not, what would be the result of someone who is refusing to do something, even if in accordance with the regulation it is allowed, of course, I would not advise to do something illegal, but if everything is allowed, whether or not we are, uh, we need to, uh, we need to take into consideration more of the employee's wishes or, I don't know, other uh, limitations. Um, so basically, uh, I think to wrap it up, uh, we have really many, many um, interesting, challenging topics to deal with. Uh, we are seeing that the legislator, um, they published, you know, some kind of a paper regarding uh, uh, work from re work remotely. Uh, it's still the, the thoughts of the legislator. It's not a law yet, but I think this is going to be 
the hottest uh, topic in the near future, of course, together with other stuff like uh, uh, grants and tools that the government is providing to employers. But I think, you know, bearing, uh, putting that aside, this is going to be uh, um, one of the significant changes that uh, we face together with the privacy aspects, as I explained in the short uh, term topics. Uh, moving on to you, Dimitris. Thank you very much, Orly. I fully agree with you that work from home and teleworking is here to stay. And in this regard, uh, I dare to say that uh, the Greek legal framework is not well prepared for this change. I mean, we have this um, kind of uh, uh, general collective bargaining agreement of 2006-2007 and the law 3846 of 2010, but now we are uh, in the 2020s. So uh, during these 10 years, uh, the, the, the whole business environment has changed in such a way that but um, I would uh, dare to call this, this law anachronistic. Uh, uh, so teleworking uh, sets a new perspective of uh, problems um, and uh, dimensions that we need to face. Uh, just uh, uh, to mention a few, the, uh, how is uh, the, the, the working time um, uh, during teleworking? How uh, can one uh, uh, regulate the online readiness for for example, when uh, replying to emails, uh, how can we uh, declare this timekeeping before the uh, relevant uh, labor inspectorate authorities uh, and, and this um, uh, Ergani uh, uh, IT system that uh, is being used by employers to, to declare overtime and overwork. Uh, another thing is how can uh, employers uh, be assured that they will not be victimized uh, in case of abusive uh, allegations by employees in case, for example, of uh, sending emails uh, after working uh, hours determined in the employment agreement and then uh, lodging complaints before the labor inspectorate claiming that they have uh, uh, worked for overtime. Uh, another thing is the, 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 the means for regulating overtime uh, like um, uh, the compliance with the G GDPR uh, and uh, uh, personal privacy uh, aspect. Uh, so it's, it's a whole new uh, or at least not new, but uh, new to the legislator uh, environment that we need to act quickly. Uh, with regards to short-term and long-term issues, uh, maybe it's not it's not uh, a matter of time per se, but it has to do also with the level of readiness of the different uh, companies. Um, for example, companies that um, have uh, uh, been uh, fitted in this uh, uh, new environment, they are now dealing already with the longer term issues, whereas companies that have just uh, uh, tried to, to assess uh, the conditions and are rather slow moving, they are uh, on, on uh, uh, on the, at the beginning of, of, of this um, uh, pace. Uh, so uh, I think that uh, we need to be very uh, elaborative and, and, and careful on, on this aspect also with regards to uh, the um, cases like work accident during uh, work from home and, and teleworking and try to regulate this uh, in, a, in a safe um, uh, and uh, uh, viable perspective. The um, other issues that I have uh, been putting as, as uh, points like enforcing stricter rules to ensure a high level of health and safety compliance is something that uh, uh, as, as uh, you said also is, needs to be uh, tackled by, by companies. They need to invest in, in health and safety. It's not uh, a distant future where an employee may claim um, a work accident uh, because he has been infected by uh, coronavirus, uh, alleging that the company has not uh, complied with um, uh, the uh, required uh, uh, level of um, uh, health and safety and has not fulfilled the relevant uh, uh, directives. 
Uh, furthermore, there is um, a necessity to adapt to flexible working schemes um, and uh, this is uh, something that will enable employers to um, regulate uh, in, in a more uh, effective uh, way the restrictions of uh, redundancies. So uh, there is also the uh, necessity to uh, make our homework and do a contingency planning in case of a second wave. We are not expecting general lockdowns, but um, uh, there are already uh, territorial lockdowns, like uh, currently in the uh, northern part of Greece for specific days. So this is something that may uh, come earlier than expected. And of course, lots has to be uh, seen uh, in, in specific um, uh, areas like uh, tourism and hospitality that uh, were forced uh, to operate um, under this kind of uh, uh, stress, whether uh, they are free to, um, to, to open or they should uh, not open because of the loss of, of revenue. So these are interesting questions um, and uh, uh, Nikos, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Dimitris. Uh, discussing long-term issues, we can, uh, of course, not avoid uh, the, the issues that both my colleagues before discussed, mental health of employees while working from home. It is obvious that protecting employees' mental health while working from home poses a serious challenges, poses serious challenges, especially during these difficult times when many employees have remained indoors for several months without enjoying the benefits of social interactions while working. It is therefore advisable that employers have their employees' mental health always under consideration and undertake risk assessments to identify any relevant risk to employees' mental health, especially those who are working from home. Taking a proactive approach on mental health issues is imperative, and we always advise employers to discuss with their employees regarding their needs and their general well-being and their concern about working from home. Closing now our presentation, we'd like to refer to a much discussed employment issue here in Cyprus, that of for workforce reductions through redundancies. In Cyprus, redundant employees are not entitled to receive compensation from their employees, but can apply for redundancy pay, payable by a governmental fund called the Cyprus Redundancy Fund. Due to this, many employers will examine the option to proceed after the end of the dismissal prohibition with redundancies in order to reduce their workforce without inducing further costs to their businesses. However, under the law, the only redundancy ground that is connected to the employee's financial situation is the ground of reduction of the volume of the employee's business prescribed by Article 18 of the law 24, 1967. Having this in mind, we must highlight that employers must be very careful when justifying redundancies under this ground since according to Larry Revenant case law, redundancies based on this ground can only be justified if the business volume can be seriously and steadily reduced in the previous years before the redundancy take place. A temporary redundancy, a temporary reduction in the volume of business cannot justify this reason. Consequently, redundancies based on this ground may entail serious litigation risk for employers since employees may challenge their termination and bring a fair dismissal claims against their employees before the course of Cyprus. So this has concluded uh, our presentation. Let's go now to my colleague, Patuhan for the rest of his presentation. Hi, Nikos, thank you. So uh, the short-term issues that I mentioned before, they could, be, they could become long-term issues as well, depending on the longevity of COVID-19 and its effects. But other than that, uh, we foresee that um, litigation and claims regarding health and safety and workplace accidents related to COVID-19 will increase a lot in the next couple of months, maybe even next year. Uh, because if, as I mentioned, if employees get infected during performance of the work or at the workplace, they can uh, claim that this is a workplace accident. They can claim compensation from the employers, etc., And they have a long time to do that. So therefore, they don't have to do it immediately, but they can do it in the near future. So that could be a long-term issue for the companies. And the other one is uh, due to the effects of COVID-19, as I mentioned, there would be, there should, there would, um, I think that there will be a lot of terminations and there will be 
uh, a lot of amendments to the working conditions and this will most likely create a lot of litigation and a lot of claims such as re-employment lawsuits, employment receivable lawsuits, and they take a lot of time to resolve. So therefore, our opinion is the companies will have to deal a lot with those type of these type of lawsuits in the in the long term, maybe within the next couple of years. So those are the long term issues for Turkey, and this is also conclusion of my presentation for Turkey. Thank you very much for uh, all the uh, introductions and interventions. I will try to conclude um, into um, the, some, some major points that I have uh, noted. Um, um, there, are, there is a consensus that uh, the uh, return to work uh, has been um, uh, uh, with a priority to uh, enforce uh, strict uh, workplace uh, uh, occupational health and safety standards and attendance rules. I noted um, uh, from Israel the idea of uh, self-regulation compared to um, a more um, state um, uh, interventing approach in the rest of the countries, uh, particularly Greece and, and Cyprus. Uh, also, I noted the, the uh, dispersal prohibition that is not applicable in, in Israel, which is also uh, within the framework of self-regulating uh, the business environment. Uh, on the other hand, uh, it was interesting to um, be notified that uh, Cyprus has uh, set uh, also sanctions, uh, including imprisonment. Uh, that is something that uh, seems to be um, very uh, heavy compared I mean, to, uh, to the uh, to, to Greek standards. And also that Turkey has uh, enabled partial or full unpaid leave, which is something that uh, uh, would be declared as um, uh, illegal uh, in, in Greece. Uh, there is um, uh, some uh, uh, necessity to, 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 do, to amend uh, the employment um, uh, conditions uh, depending on, on the applicable um, uh, circumstances. And as a, as a conclusion, um, I think that we need to uh, focus on, on the work from uh, home schemes so that they can uh, um, be uh, uh, treated um, as, uh, as an extension of the employment uh, relationship and uh, cannot be regarded as an abuse of uh, employment uh, terms, but um, uh, can work uh, as a further de development of the uh, employment uh, uh, relationship. Uh, and I will uh, ask you, Nikos, uh, to uh, uh, raise any questions that uh, uh, might have been uh, raised so far to the participants. Yeah, thank you very much, Dimitris, for summing up. We will now proceed to the Q&A section of this webinar. We're trying to answer as much as questions possible posed by our audience on the Q&A chat or send by email. Uh, so I have uh, categorized the, the questions in order to, to be as short as possible. So the first question is a very interesting question that regard all jurisdictions, I think. Therefore, I will pose it uh, and go to, uh, to all the speakers one by one to get their answers. The question is, uh, what are the options available for employers wishing to terminate a contract of employment during the dismissal prohibition period? Uh, since as I saw from the presentation before, only or, uh, the Israel, Israel actually doesn't have a dismissal prohibition. We will, uh, the rest of the jurisdictions, let's answer this. And we will go to Orly if she has any, any, any comments. Uh, Batuhan, do you want to start first answering this sure. question? Sure. Uh, well, the legislation only states that employer cannot terminate employees unilaterally unless there is a just cause. 
but a social security and employment agency interprets this as any kind of termination by the employer except just cause and also mutual agreements or terminations with settlement agreements will be within the scope of a termination ban. So this means that the only option for an employer uh, to ter for termination is termination with just cause. And those are quite limited. For example, if the employee breaches confidentiality or conduct sexual harassment, etc., then we can terminate. But other than that, if you don't have any just reason for termination, then you should not terminate the employees during the termination ban. Okay, that's very clear. Dimitrios, care to answer? Uh, interestingly, the Greek legislator has not distinguished between uh, the causes of termination. So he has put a, a general uh, termination prohibition for companies that have made use of the uh, st state subsidy programs like uh, the suspension of environment, of employment uh, relationships uh, and the lately this uh, Synergasia program. So practically the uh, employees uh, who are participating in, in these programs in, in the suspension, um, uh, they cannot be terminated for either cause, and in the Synergasia program, they cannot be terminated, whereas the employer can terminate remaining employees not participating in the program. Uh, there, uh, there may be a possibility for employers to terminate employees by uh, agreeing um, a mutual agreement, uh, a voluntary uh, leave, but uh, this has to be uh, set up in a carefully drafted uh, um, uh, mutual agreement. And of course, this bears the risk for the employees not to be able, able to get the unemployment uh, uh, benefit because of, of this uh, uh, situation. And further to the termination, there is also another restriction for employers that um, after the uh, 45 days of the uh, initial uh, law, that is uh, until 14th of July, and after uh, the 30 days of the new Garcia law, they may not reduce their personnel meaning that they can terminate, but they should hire another employee with the same employment contract. So this means full-time for full-time and definite time for definite time, and also the, the same remuneration. Okay, uh, I will try to answer this question myself. So in Cyprus, it is, uh, it is you can, an employer can proceed with termination under mutual termination agreements or other settlement agreements agreed with the employee. There is not a specific provision in employment legislation about that, but under employment case law, terminations uh, that occur after such an agreement, after any agreement of an employee and employer, do not constitute a dismissal and constitute a resignation from the part of the employee. Under this uh, direction, under this case law, uh, it, it is of course uh, uh, permissible for employers to proceed with mutual termination agreements and dismiss and terminate employments under such an agreement. We should note that in Cyprus, a mutual termination agreement would ordinarily involve the employer paying the employee a financial statement for the employee's consent as agreement to terminate for the termination of his employment. And if the employee agrees, this will constitute a resignation as already mentioned, and, and the employee will not have any claims under employment law neither the company will have any issues in related to participating in the scheme issues by the government. Another point I must highlight is that under the regulations of the schemes, uh, uh, employers may proceed with termination of that regard gross misconduct, only about gross misconduct, no, though not uh, other reasons. So employers may proceed with such dismissals under the gross misconduct uh, if employers are guilty of gross misconduct, but they must always have in mind that under Cypriot case law, gross misconduct regards only very serious behaviors that usually have something to do with criminal uh, liability like theft, sexual harassment, using narcotics or uh, alcohol in the workplace and behavior like that. So everybody must be really careful when using the gross misconduct ground to dismiss employees uh, under, this, uh, under this period. So 
Uh, Orly, do you have any comments on this? I think for the sake of time, I will skip my turn because I understand that we are running out of time. So thank you. Okay, okay. and do you have any, any other time for uh, to take another question? No, I think it's better that we, uh, or that I uh, wrap up, actually, uh, we are very conscious of uh, time. Uh, so uh, as I previously mentioned, if you have any queries to the presenters, they will remain available by email. And if your queries, however, related to another jurisdiction that was not covered today, you can contact me at annie.lux.uslabores.com or go to the people pages of our website to find the right contact. Then I would also like to mention that for um, further uh, updates on the coronavirus, I recommend that uh, you visit our coronavirus page on our website, which is regularly updated as the situation evolves. Uh, from there, along with other uh, resources and tools, you can, uh, for example, download the coronavirus guide for international employers and find information for 58 countries. Then for more information on the webinars, you can visit our webinar page on our website uh, where we keep all the past recordings and uh, slide decks for each of the webinars. Finally, I would like to thank everybody for attending and thanks also for our presenters for their insights. Um, I'm happy that you joined and see you next time. So with that, this webinar will now be ending. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all.